600 with the uh, Honda VTEC Civic Type R engine in the back. It's very, very similar to our mini kits. If you uh, imagine the same process, chop the rear out of the car and the cage slots up and inside, exactly the same process as the mini. Um, in actual fact, it uses all the mini drive shafts and the running gear, so it's not a problem for spares and things like that if we want to sell your bits in the future if you break down. Um, it's got the 402 into one exhaust on it. This one will be 235 horsepower in a car, which is in es essentially the Italian version of a Mini. Um, quite pleased with this one. The fit of the cage is tremendous. So now it all just goes together, um, using pretty much stock parts for us. So inside you'll see the raised tunnel. Again, an item that we use from the Minis. Um, gear linkage is all in there. Bolt-in door bars on this one. Um, but yeah, really pleased with this. I think it will go very, very well. Okay, so we've got a, a carver here, which is the three-wheeler. Just keep going, doesn't matter. We're not going to use any of this, but it's a rehearsal. This is the carver three-wheeler. Leans as it goes <coughs> through the corners. It's based on a Daihatsu 660 three-cylinder turbo engine. And normally it's got 100 horsepower. We've actually fitted a Hayabusa turbo into it. It's 400 horsepower. It's one of our sort of engines that we've used quite a lot. Good spec engine. Um, and I have to say, it's the tightest insulation we've ever done in anything. One of the problems is that the two strut tops are so close together, the wheel track is extremely narrow. The car itself leans over the top backwards and forwards as it goes around the bends. So the available space around everything is very, very tight. You've got no room at the front. Um, it's got to run an oil pump and a bigger alternator because of all the electronics on it and when it leans in the corners it actually leans by a hydraulic ram pushing it backwards and forwards all computer controlled so now it's gone up four times in the horsepower um, quite a complex piece of kit I don't think I'll be test driving it though definitely not you need four wheels on your car Okay, this is the twin engine Ultima sports car. We bought it for a customer at that time. It had a play, 5.3 litre, uh, normally aspirated engine in onto a, a transaxle. We've taken all that out and we've put two high muscle turbos into it for 500 horsepower apiece, um, making 1,000 horsepower. The two engines run completely independently of each other. And if you look down here, when you press the throttle, it operates this cable and it twists works both engines at the same time. This engine drives through a prop shaft to the front wheels and it's spun that way around. This engine spun this way around and drives a prop shaft to the rear wheels. So that gives us 500 horsepower at the back wheels, 500 at the front. It's then the power to each set of wheels is controlled electronically by having wheel speed sensors on all four wheels. We've got 3G sensors on the car, front, middle and back. It knows steering angle input, engine revs. Everything about it goes into an onboard computer, a little Motec um, ADL dash, which reads 60,000 bytes of information a second. And it works out what slip you need at the front wheels to make it turn in on the corners, etc. And it just kills power. How it does that is it either retards the ignition a little bit, kills a bit of fuel, or both, or if it really wants to cut and you've got wheel spin at the front, it then cuts spark. So that it's quite a progressive program in it to make it handle. We very rarely cut power to the rear wheels, it's nearly always on the front wheels to get it to steer through corners and sort of accelerate off without understeer. Car obviously is quite complicated mechanically and electronically and it's taken quite a lot of building, but it's been a very good sort of process to get the thing right from the start with no sort of plans or drawings, we just built it and we've developed it over the last three or four years to where it is now. Recent developments on it have been water-cooled intercoolers, water-cooled oil pump, uh, sorry, oil coolers. Um, we've put extra tanks in because it carries such a lot of water and it's low down at the front. So we've put extra header tanks in to bleed off in various points to stop the engine air locking. Um, a bigger alternator on it because of all the electronic drag on, on all the components. The front suspension has been completely reworked. On a normal Ultima, they run um, Ford Cortina uprights, which is 
a geometry and a technology from the 70s where they ran 175 or 185 7013 tyres, tiny little tyres, low, lower profile with a bigger, with a bigger sidewall in them. Now we're on 18 inch rims, lo very low profile, with a different offset on the wheel. So when we first drove the car, it, didn't, it just pulled all over the place on white lines or anything, you couldn't steer it. So we've ended up redesigning all the front steering geometry, all the uprights, we've put some huge brake calipers on it, um, got all the kingpin inclination angles and all the Ackerman angles correct on it, and now you can drive it with one hand, no problem. You can, you can see here one of the G-sensors, the front G-sensor, you've got the uh, breather for the diff, down here is the diff, in this area here, obviously the horizontal shock absorbers are on there, working by push rods onto the front wheels, um, that's one of the breather tanks for the, for the uh, header tanks for the water system to prevent air locks. So we've got a 1955 Mark V Jaguar saloon car, a um, little old anthill mob car if you like. We've taken all the old running gear out of it and it's running on uh, XJR6 supercharged running gear in its entirety really. It's got the front axle, back axle, it's got all the steering in it, it's got everything as the stock brand new sort of car. Um, the wiring loom's a nightmare, there's 11 ECUs in it. We've used the sunroof out of the modern jag into the old jag and if you look at the curve of the roof you can't tell we've even put it in and it's not even blended in yet it's just tacked in um, so it's running all the airbags and, and all the stuff out of the original sort of new jag it should be quite a nice car it's quite a quite a silly car to see driving down the motorway at doing 80 mile an hour when you think it couldn't possibly do it and it's only actually just ticking over okay this is the chassis obviously with the engine and running gear in for the Mark 5 Jag. Uh, you'll see it fits in pretty neat and tidy. When we actually show you some shots of it with the body on, you'll appreciate just how sweet it is. Um, it actually runs the same wheelbase as the original Jag from the 1950s, and it's the same wheel track, which is just amazing. It's almost as though they've got one drawing for a chassis with the wheelbase and the sort of track for a, for a Jag, and they just plonk a different body shape on it. Lamborghini Espada, a Lamborghini Espada from 1966, an old supercar, it's got a V12 Lamborghini engine in it, normally they run on six pairs of Webbers, but they were famous, these cars were famous for setting fire to themselves by spitting back through the throttle bodies and, and setting fire to the air intake. Um, this has come in for us, we've put 12 Yamaha motorcycle carbs on it, so it has 12 individual carbs on there. Um, it had water overheating problems, we've solved those, solved the starting and running issues, uh, put electric power steering on it, so now it's been sort of modernised a little bit to what it was.